Welcome back to Walkton Entertainment. I'm your host, Peter Walkton, and today I am absolutely filled with excitement to speak with a man that I am very, very thrilled to meet and greet. This man is responsible for many incredible films, including The Guest, which I'm proud to own the steelbook of, and also your next. This man is also a writer. He's an actor, producer, director. He's also a cinema, cinematographer, editor, and uh, the credits are incredibly long. And to celebrate his upcoming film, Seance, which is going to shutter from the 29th of September, joining me today is none other than Mr. Simon Barrett. Good morning, Simon. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very, very well. Well, look, greetings from Australia. Uh, as mentioned, I'm a huge fan of your work and uh, I'm very, very excited to talk about your latest film where you've not only been the writer, but this time you've decided to sit behind the camera and also basically direct this film. And it is actually your first uh, feature length directional film. So a massive congratulations to you from Australia. And, you know, looking at your career, you know, if I go onto IMBD and I check out your career, you know, you've had a fantastic, phenomenal career. And I also see a lot of horror films and a lot of things relating to horror. And the first question I wanted to ask you is, you know, what is it about horror? What is it about your love for horror films? Um, you know, I don't know that I have a, you know, a specific answer for that. I think, you know, I think I'm just attracted to the genre for the reason most people are, which is, you know, it, it's just kind of a fun way to experience uh, our fear of dying in a narrative uh, format. And, you know, as a kid, I was just drawn to anything that was kind of forbidden or, you know, that people kind of didn't want me to be watching. You know, that made me kind of a double down on my interests as of course, uh, you know, as the case for everyone. And so horror movies were kind of like this, this brief taboo in my childhood. And I think uh, I never quite got over, you know, like the, the feeling of excitement when I, you know, convinced like some video store clerk to let me walk out with some movie that I had no business renting at my age and, <laughs> and got to see something like, you know, blood sucking freaks or, you yes. know, night of the bloody apes or some nonsense movie. Fantastic. And let's let's cut straight to the chase about this new film, Seance, which I have actually seen. I've been very honoured uh, to see this film in advance prior to this interview. Uh, look, fantastic film. Again, congratulations. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful achievement, you know, to, to see this film and to see where you've come. But, uh, you know, a lot of people from Australia don't know a great deal about this film yet because it hasn't come out. You know, in your own words, what's the best way you could describe what seance is about without any sort of major spoilers naturally but what's your main plot point about this film seance is a cozy slasher uh, it's my attempt to do uh, for the slasher genre what like a what like a, a airport novel where the cat solves the murder kind of would do for like a murder mystery yeah. um i love i love slasher movies because i love the structure of them i love the kind of inherent uh mystery but within kind of a you know usually a gothic horror atmosphere sometimes uh, certainly in the case of the, a lot of the early 80s ones and um you know i also just wanted that to be my first film so so you know so look if i were to describe the plot i'd say you know it's a supernatural murder mystery you know set at a girl's boarding school where a new student moves into a dorm room where the previous resident has passed away mm -hmm. uh, and she thinks her dorm room's haunted and starts trying to figure out what happened um, which is, you know, a fairly straightforward setup for one of these things. And, and to a certain extent, I would say that I think Seance is a fairly straightforward film because uh, I tend to enjoy slasher movies that just kind of follow that sort of arc. Uh, but hopefully people are kind of surprised at least by the, you know, the style and tone of, of certain things. Well, I certainly was. I mean, going into this film, like I said, I didn't know a great deal about it, but I certainly found it a very pleasing joyride. And I won't reveal anything, but there's a lot of twists and reveals that are very pleasing throughout the film from the very very get-go but how do you get an idea for a film like this did something ever trigger in your mind and you sort of thought oh that would be a great film did you ever experience something or hear about a story what, what was the motivation behind this film i'm afraid not uh, you know no. I, I don't take i don't tend to take a lot of personal motivation from my stories um you know i know everyone works differently but uh i i tend to kind of view my characters sometimes as like separate people who I'm kind of trying to figure out, you know, what their story or, or narrative should be. Um, you know, honestly, I, I would say that the inspiration for Seance was mostly derived from other fiction. 
Um, I don't know if that's, you know, exciting, but that's, that's the truth. Uh, you know, I, I was mostly kind of looking at other films and other books and stuff uh, that, you know, that was stuff that I enjoyed and kind of trying to think of how to do a, a different spin on that sort of tale. Yeah, very, very cool. And as mentioned, you know, this film does have a lot of twists and, and mysteries right from the start. Did you always set out to make a film that would combine both horror and thriller mixed into one? Did you always plan to have a few good surprises along the way to keep the audiences engaged? Or is it something that you sort of thought while filming, hey, we could do this? Was it always set in stone that that's the way you wanted to make it? Yeah, I mean, without spoiling anything, seance was interesting because i knew you know just i mean the title alone obviously yeah. i wanted to tell a, a ghost story but um ghost stories like kind of frustrate me sometimes as narratives because if i don't really understand what the rules are or, or what's at stake which is kind of commonly uh the case with like mainstream supernatural films you know for example you know if a poltergeist can fling you know uh, you know, a picture at me, then I don't really understand why it can't just like stick its hand into my brain and do like this, and then I'm just dead if yeah. it doesn't want me to be in its house. You know, so so like I don't really understand the rules of ghosts a lot. So I knew I wanted to do a ghost story, but I also kind of felt like the rules of what a ghost can and can't do should be clear, and the extent to which a ghost could harm someone living should be kind of like almost what's being debated throughout the film you know that should yeah. almost be the mystery that the characters are trying to uncover and the reason for that is just that's my like personal philosophy towards ghost stories so um so yeah so i kind of did always plan it to have horror and thriller elements because i knew the horror elements were not necessarily going to be what was driving the plot forward if that makes sense perfectly yeah it makes sense indeed yeah yeah and there's definitely some good thrills that keep the viewers guessing all throughout the entire film um which was just tremendous to to see but it's a great combination there's a great balance in this film so i was very curious to know if that's how you always set it out uh from the get-go and uh you know what was it like working with the lead actress we've got suki waterhouse uh, as a lead actress in this film so she's the character that obviously goes to this boarding school she's taking over a dorm as you mentioned someone's passed away what was it like working with her as a lead role of this film was she great to work with yeah i mean i don't have really any complaints about suki um <laughs> she's pretty cool you know i mean like she's she's probably a lot more i guess maybe like introspective and and just kind of strange than i expected maybe going in to meet with her yeah. You know, from the very first, like, from our very first, you know, meeting, you know, I was just kind of like, she, she kind of had like an interesting series of reference points from the various, from the very start for the character. And I clearly thought about it quite deeply. So, you know, from our very first meeting, you know, where I was kind of like, you know, I, I would like to cast this person. Yeah. Um, we got along really great. You know, she actually came up to the martial arts school that I train at here in Los Angeles and, and came in for a couple of days and worked with me on some basic blocks and punches just so that, you wow. know. When it came to the fighting stuff, she'd be able to jump right in and, and I'd be able to kind of choreograph her really quickly. And, you know, that's not the kind of thing that I necessarily like. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I didn't like necessarily know if she'd be down for that. I mean, for one thing, you know, you're kind of asking someone to work before they've like officially been hired in some of those cases. So yeah. you want to be very respectful, uh, especially since I was a first time director. But, you know, I, I, I felt like it would be if she was down for that, I kind of felt like it would be important for us to have a bit of you know uh just a bit more communication you know a bit of a common language before we off went off to winnipeg and did yeah. this very difficult shoot so fortunately she was down for that and we were able to do a little training and kind of rehearsals just on our own uh, up at the school in north hollywood uh you know before we went off to winnipeg so so yeah and then you know and then from there on i kind of felt like she really had just a, a solid take on the character that i would just kind of like let guide the scenes Brilliant. No, and again, she's fantastic in this film as well. And uh, definitely a good combination with you and her uh, within this film. But, you know, you've already mentioned the, the scene, for example, is actually set at a boarding school. You've also got a number of horror aspects, which I won't dive too much into. But, you know, with this film containing a supernatural element, horror elements, and you've got a lot of characters in this film too. You know, were there any sort of major challenges maybe even with locations for example did you have any major challenges while making your first directional feature length film well yeah yeah i did <laughs> yeah um i could definitely uh elaborate on that uh you know pretty much as long as you wanted me to you oh. mentioned locations um yeah locations were actually i would say in a way 
the biggest challenge right. you know once you once you've got them sorted out you know it, it, the, the schedule is what it is and you're making things work the way you're making them work but essentially no schools would actually let us film in them wow. um, because of you know because of the content of the film yes uh which you know was not not at all honestly unreasonable but i'll admit uh, it, it kind of took me a little by surprise um mm. you know but uh but you know there was no incentive for you know a, an actual private academy in winnipeg to, to let us shoot there uh, especially once they kind of understood what the content of the the movie was going to be <laughs> but, yeah. you know they, they make more money from tuition than, than we would have paid them you know for for you know four and a half weeks of shooting or whatever so uh so we kind of had to cobble together the school from a bunch of locations you know wow. what looks you know what looks like the exterior is actually just a private residence uh what looks like you know and then the interiors are a bunch of different buildings all over winnipeg uh including like a bank building and we did some limited builds in a storage facility um, you know, for things like the dorm, you know, we built like one dorm room that uh, my production designer, Marlena Fieri, would like switch around to, you know, depending on whose room it was supposed to be, you know, we'd switch the window and the pipe and the walls and stuff. So it would feel like a different room. Right. But, you know, you're always seeing the same room in the movie. Um, you know, so stuff like that, honestly, forced us to shoot in a certain order with certain limitations that made, uh, you know, a 22 day shoot with a huge kind of young cast. Uh, which is already kind of a daunting prospect, um, very daunting, because because you know then you're shooting everything out of sequence. You have a lead character who has a very specific bruise progression uh, oh, as the yes. film goes on because she's taking damage yeah. over the course of the movie. And so Suki's look, you know, Suki. One of the first conversations I had with Suki was that I wanted her to get a black eye basically in the opening scene, so that the rest of the movie she kind of has a, a black eye and. Mm. It just kind of sets her apart as, as you know, kind of an underdog and an outcast a bit. Uh, but that black eye alone means you're paying way more attention to continuity than you would normally have to. And, and when you're shooting all over the place, um, yeah, it was quite challenging. And, you know, sometimes I would just kind of sit down with the cast and just be like, okay, remember the previous scene, you were in this place, you come directly in it. Like, right. and, and I mean, that sounds like silly, but we all kind of needed just remind ourselves like, okay, that's right. This just happened. Cause mm -hmm. it was, you know, cause the way we were just flying around, you know, the, the most recent thing I worked on was a segment of the film VHS 94. Um, and, yes. and I had the extreme pleasure of being able to shoot that more or less in sequence. Wow. Um, and, and which, which when you're working with an actor is just so much easier cause they can just completely keep track of their character and the narrative um you know whereas you know the seance was quite difficult sometimes just the the amount of time we had to shoot some of these scenes the seance scenes in particular uh were were really awful to shoot you know just oh. you just have seven people sitting around the table and yeah. the the coverage of those scenes is just brutal yeah. you know you just you just have to get as many shots as you can and just hope it comes together in the editing room fortunately i had a great editor james vandewater uh, so, you know, so I'm, I'm happy with how everything turned out, but yeah, I, I definitely, I learned a lot of things and, and there were definitely some times where it felt like we weren't going to get out of there with a the finished movie. Uh, cause we had no overtime, no reshoots, yeah. you know, we went straight, we went straight basically into COVID. So, you yeah. know, there were a couple scenes that I remember being like, okay, I hope I got that scene. And yeah. then, you know, the answer was, uh, I guess I did. Very, very um, cool. Well, in regards to things like you mentioned location, you would never have known that you filmed at multiple locations. So shout out to you and your editor as well, because it looks seamless and um, some very cool insight about some of the dramas and interesting challenges you had. Um, I have got you for about a couple of minutes remaining. So um, you've, you've thrown a little penny in my ear. You mentioned VHS 94, um, which I know that you're also involved in. Now here in Australia, uh, the trailer has actually landed about four days ago. Um, and I know this is a bit of a sidestep, but I do know you're involved in this film and it's coming out in October as well, uh, exclusively to Shudder. But is there anything you can reveal or any sort of comments you want to say about VHS 94 very, very briefly before we wrap up? Sure. I mean, you know, like the project was initially conceived kind of by David Bruckner, who uh, really mm -hmm. wanted to come, you know, he, he directed the Amateur Night segment, really the first segment of the first VHS film. Uh, if you don't count Adam Wingard's in my wraparound. Uh, and and uh, David Bruckner had this notion of like taking it all the way back to 1994 and like really using 
you know, like pure VHS and kind of like, like analog camera technology to shoot a new kind of reboot of the series. And I thought that was such an interesting, weird idea and um, kind of instantly was like, wait, will Shutter actually let us shoot this movie at, you know, 30 frames a second? And the yeah. answer was, yes, they would, you know, they would let us do it. And so, you know, cause they, they, you know, when you're dealing with a streaming service, you know, they have certain obligations, of course, to like their shareholders and such, yeah. but they'll also allow you a certain amount of creative freedom if they think you're generating the kind of film, you know, their fans want. So Shudder basically let us make this movie in a way that like no one else, uh, no one else would, which is kind of what you need with a VHS film. Cause they were always kind of made in a way that like, you know, because we were making them for no money, we would be able to t do innovative things with cameras that like, no studio film could get away with just because the quality was so low of course, um, yeah. with cameras and and we kind of were able to do that again um you know i i really love all the pieces uh i think it really feels like an authentic like cursed you know movie from 1994 which is what we were trying to create i love horror it really anthologies. does um and i will say this also like every filmmaker on vhs 1994 or vhs 94 uh like like really went all out it's not um you know, if, if fans are concerned um, that it might be like overly subtle mm. uh, or like, a you know, a, too much of an art horror film, I, I would like to reassure them that, that we really went for a pure, like extreme horror anthology kind of as much as we could. And, and I think yeah. probably there'll be something someone likes in every segment, unless you don't have an appetite for that kind of like gory found footage stuff. In which case well, I, I uh, had the opportunity to screen the film last night and I must give oh, you okay. credit. Um, I must say your segment, again, no spoilers, uh, took me a while to go to sleep last night and I usually handle horror pretty well, but your segment gave me chills and goosebumps um, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic and knowing you shot your segment in sequence um, was brilliant. So I hope you didn't mind I snuck in a VHS 94 question, but I do yeah. know Shutter are having a very big month with you at the moment. So with Seance the 29th of September, and then VHS 94 also coming out very soon in October. Um, I'm going to wrap up now. Um, I was going to basically just give you the opportunity just before I run away, just a last maybe final shout out or comment um, as to why the good people of Australia should subscribe to Shutter today and check out Seance. Is there any final comments you'd like to give to the good people of Australia before they check out this film? Well, I mean, I'll just say this is like, look, in, in the era of streaming, there's not a lot of home for, you know, shall we say like progressive, uh, well, let's just say like even challenging content, right? Because if you're, if you're, you know, and Shudder is like the streaming network that is really taking chances yeah. on movies that are a little transgressive, you know, maybe shocking, you know, like they're, they're willing to, you know, take a shot on that. So I am happy to be a Shudder subscriber genuinely, because I think like, they are releasing movies that otherwise I wouldn't be able to see. And I'm happy. Uh, I'm immensely gratified that they bought Seance and then, you know, picked up VHS 94 in an early stage Fantastic. as well. I'm, I'm happy to be working with them because, uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, there's only one, uh, <laughs> there's only one uh, streaming service that has like blood sucking freaks, yeah. uh, at least here in the U.S. So, Absolutely. You, know, you got to support that. Well, there you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's clear that Shutter Australia and Shutter all around the world have great taste in horror. Uh, Simon, like I said, it's been a great honor and a pleasure to, to meet you and just sneak in a quick interview. I thank you very much for your time and uh, I wish you all the very best success. I'm sure I'm going to see your name more often on movie posters in the near future. Thank you once again and wish you all the very best. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you.